Hi, in today's video we're going to be looking at covalent bonding. Now in my previous video we looked at ionic bonding and it's important that you remember that ionic bonding is between a metal and a non-metal and that electrons are being transferred from the metal to the non-metal held together by an electrostatic force. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at a covalent bond and in covalent bonding this is where you are pair of electrons is being shared and I've underlined the keywords that perhaps is going to be on the mark scheme if this question is asked. Right? Now covalent bonding only occurs between non-metals. Only between non-metals. Right? You could do a, a quick table to compare ionic bonding between covalent bonding and the force which holds the structure together after it has been formed is called an intermolecular force. Now quickly, let's get into the dot and cross diagram for drawing covalent bonding. Alright, so here we're looking at a chlorine, a two chlorine atoms. Okay, so chlorine is found in group 7, atomic number 17, which means it has 17 electrons, therefore it is 287. Now we're just going to use the outer shells only. Okay, so 6 and 7 and we have 2, 4, 6 and 7. Now neither of these atoms is stable. They both need one more electron. So they decide that, hey, let's, let's get together and share an electron. So they have both taken one each. And if they're both taken one each, it means therefore six electrons is left on the outside. Okay? We have two, we have four, we have six with a pair of electrons there. Okay? And then we have two, four, six. And if you check, they're both stable. Two, four, six, eight. Because you need eight electrons to be stable because they're being shared here. Two, four, six, eight. They've been shared there. So what you end up with is a chlorine bonded to a chlorine, and that is called a single bond, represented by one line. Okay? So what is actually happening here is you have a pair of electrons being shared there. Okay? Very important that you look at your non-bonding pairs on the outside here and how many electrons are being shared there. Okay? Let's look at another one, oxygen and oxygen. Now, oxygen has an atomic number of 8, which means it's found in group 6, which makes it 2, 6. And this also is 2, 6. So if you think about it straight away, oxygen needs 2 more electrons to be stable. Now, if 2 oxygen needs 2 electrons to be stable, they decide, hey, let's come together, let's overlap, and let's share. So you're going to take 2 from one oxygen, two from another one. Okay, and if you've taken two, it means therefore four electron is left back. It's very important that you count how many electrons is left back. They will count it and it's a part of the mark scheme as well. Okay, so what you end up with is four electrons being shared. So you now have an oxygen double bonded. So that's two covalent bonds there okay so that's oxygen to oxygen double bond all right let's look at another one okay so nitrogen has seven electrons therefore it is two five it's found in group five in your periodic table all right so let's have a look two four five two four and five too easy right it needs three more electrons that one needs three more electrons hey let's come together let's form a bond right each one is going to put three okay right no one is allowed to put more than the other one so you have two four six if you've taken three here it means you only have two more electrons to go on the outside again very important that you count those electrons so what you have is one two three bonds three covalent bonds there okay which means that you're sharing six electrons all right now let's look at a scenario like water h2o okay h2o 
hydrogen 1, oxygen 2, 6, hydrogen 1. Now if you think about it, oxygen 2, 4, 6. Oxy oxygen needs two more electrons. Hydrogen needs one more electron for the first shell. So what will happen? Hydrogen will say to oxygen, hey, can we share the, that electron there? That next, next hydrogen will say, let's share there. And oxygen is going to say yes, because it needs two more electrons. So what you end up with, if you've taken two electrons there, what you're going to end up with is a structure like this. The hydrogen is going to add one to the bond, also oxygen. Hydrogen is also going to add one to the bond, also oxygen. There's no more electrons to put here because hydrogen only have one. It's stable, that's stable, which means therefore I know we'll have two more electrons here. Sorry, four more electrons there. So you end up with that structure. So if we draw the structure, it looks something like that. It doesn't matter if your line is straight or not. Okay, and that's how you end up with H2O. Again, two nonmetals. Let's look at another one, ammonia, NH3. Okay, as we said before, nitrogen has five electrons on the outer shell. So two, three, four, five. Hydrogen has one each. Okay, good. They're going to come together. They're going to bond. So hydrogen will add one. Nitrogen will add one. Hydrogen will add one. Nitrogen will add one, hydrogen will add one, nitrogen will add one, and therefore now you're going to have only two electrons left back. Let's count two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen is stable, two, stable, stable, stable. So you, therefore you end up with a structure like this a single bond, a single bond, and a single bond. Okay? And let's try the most difficult one that you probably would get on your exam. So carbon dioxide. So carbon uh, is 2, 4. It's in group 4. So let's go. 2, 4. Oxygen is 2, 6. All right. So 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 6. Okay. So carbon needs 4 more electrons. Oxygen only needs 2. So oxygen is going to add 2 to the bond. Likewise with carbon, okay? If you add two, it therefore means you're going to have four left back, four electrons left back here. All right, same thing is going to happen to on the other side because oxygen needs two more electrons, okay? Which means, therefore, oxygen is going to have four left back. And please note, there's no more electrons to be shared with the carbon as it has taken two from here to add to one oxygen and two from there to add to the other one. So what you end up with is C double bond O, C double bond O, okay? Too easy, all right? Now, finally, I would say have a go at this one. See if you can figure that one out, okay? So carbon, that is two, four, okay? Hydrogen is one. Hydrogen is one, hydrogen is one, that is one. So you put your one electron, okay? One electron and karma will ha now have four. See if you can come up with that structure. Feel free to pause the video and have a go, okay? Good, your final structure should look like this. All right, you can draw the structural formula single bond single bond single bond okay thank you for tuning in and remember it's not rocket science it's only gcse science too easy all the best in your gcse's